Hey guys, so this is here bringing you another video. Welcome back to Challenge Spectate, or technically High Rating Spectate. We're watching a Master Shaco player. The reason for it is, you know, no surprise. I've actually been enjoying Shaco. Um, I actually was playing him uh, last year a bit more in support, and I've actually moved in playing him more jungle, just standard AD jungle. Um, this is, I think, what this is. Um, so Shaco, I would say, is a pretty strong champion right now. Chain CC into a kill on Cassante. I think Cassante got caught a little bit sleeping there. But um, again, something like a Pantheon, which you can see as support. Again, so Pantheon support is highly aggressive. They're going to try and go for plays, obviously. Um, so Anivia gets the first kill. And yeah, that level one is worth saying. It doesn't kind of seem in first impression scary, but it is. Like Pantheon level one, Samira, not terrible if she goes E or even Q. Uh, Anivia Q level one, AoE stun. Orn, if he starts his knock up, that's pretty good. Uh, Shaco's kind of useless because he wants to take boxes for his jungle clear, but still. So, clear-wise, it's worth knowing, and just to explain, and he, some people are like, oh, he's starting this side because he was there. More Shakos are now not starting the historic, like, start here and put boxes down. The reason for it is because it's just constantly disrupted. So, interesting to me, he's starting one box on blue and two boxes over here, but to me, that would he have enough clear time... So another box, oh, another one goes down during it. These then begin it. He'll, he's not smiting it, so he'll probably end up smiting that. Okay. That, I can get that. That, I imagine, nine times out of ten when you learn to do it, it's fine. There'll be one time out of ten that you muck that up and one of them will reset. But yeah, that, okay, that's interesting. I might give that a go the next time I play jungle on this side of the map, which is blue side, obviously. That, again, what I'd be interesting to see is what his absolute clear time is. Obviously, Shaco isn't, like, he's not really a champion that gets a leash, obviously, because he has boxes. Doesn't mean he shouldn't get a leash. It just he's, it means he doesn't need one. So if you can give your laners the advantage of not leashing, it's actually typically a good thing. Um, so again, does the box AoE just, I will say weirdly, and I don't know, maybe it's just me. He seems to be doing this really fast. Like his absolute damage on everything seems high. But I, whenever I play Shaco, I'm typically starting always red side. So maybe blue side start is quicker. And Nivea gets a solo bolo on the Katarina. Again, Typically, Anivia is good against Katarina. It's just Katarina is very annoying. And usually what happens is historically, obviously, why, you know, it's an ex-Anivia main. Um, which, I, by the way, I want to get back into playing Anivia soon. Uh, maybe back from the holiday. Uh, when we're really focused on climbing. Um, but yeah, the, the thing that happens always historically with me and Katarina is they just never lane against me. I beat them in lane. But what do they do? They just mega roam, get fed bot lane, and then eventually kill you because they're just overfed. That's what annoys me. Um, so yeah, straight away, ready for the crab, smites it immediately, lets the box finish it off, and then gonna head directly to mid. So this, again, is incredibly efficient clear, very fast clear, and Shaco should be on free kill. So this Katarina, the one thing that she's doing continuously, which again is a very big Katarina trait, is continuously fighting no matter what. She is one of those champions that, oh, there's the Kha'Zix, does get the shutdown, but Shaco might be able to fight this Kha'Zix. So the Kha'Zix has been... You could say behind the Shaco that Kazix went probably for here, realized it was dead, and now Shaco gets to go over and get this one. So they've done a very similar clear speed, and well, if anything, the Kazix have been behind. Um, so yes, the Kazix does get a kill though. So both junglers with one kill. Shaco although has obviously the assist, the confidence of leaving it. See, that's something that I don't do, and this is why we do these challenge spectates. He left that around 400 health and just knew, okay, that's dead. I can move on now. It doesn't seem like a lot, but that is what is it's efficient, right? If you don't need to be there, it's going to finish it off naturally. Then you don't have to be there. So massively trying to get the clear. The problem with this type of dive, it's risky. The longer that this takes, the more likely a Kha'Zix is going to appear. And that's usually a bad thing. So Orn, I would say, actually has to be a little bit careful now. He is going for the towel plate. Shaco's not going to try and share the gold of it, I guess. And I think he's not going to get the plate yet. And there's the Kha'Zix. So I would have expected this Kha'Zix, if I was the Orden, to be here. Because they were looking vaguely for a dive on the, the Kassante. That naturally is going to bring the Kha'Zix over. And the, yeah, the Shaco left. But immediately, the, the, the Kha'Zix is ready to go. 
So, again, another very interesting thing. Oh, here we go. Oh, he doesn't get the backstab. So, again, even for one of the best Shaco players on EU West, you don't... Again, you can muck up backstabs. It does happen. But what's interesting to me... So, arguably, Boots of Swifties are too strong right now. I don't know if they're getting nerfed soon. Uh, they do seem on the strong side. Uh, a lot of people are buying them. But he has rushed Swifties. That is... It's interesting to me because on one hand, I get it. And the other hand, I don't. So, Shaco historically is a I want to snowball early game champion. And to do that, a lot of the time, you just want big damage, right? You want to get as many like early longsword items as you can. But in the same regard, if you if you feel like you're going to do well regardless, and this has been a pretty good start to this game, movement speed is one of the most powerful things in the game because you get to be all over the map. You get to make plays around the map. And if you're really fast, they can't deal with your tempo. So that is actually quite a, an interesting thing to consider. What I would say... And again, we're just watching this one replay. Is if I, if I was now in a game of Shaco and I'm basing and I've started with a kill or an assist, kind of like this Shaco, and you're like, okay, my early game is pretty good, then I think Boots of Swifties does sometimes make sense. Um, because you've had that early good game. If you do your first base and you haven't yet got a kill, I don't think I would go Swifties early. I think I would be like, right, I haven't got a kill yet. I'm on my first base. Right, I'm going to buy some damage to try and get my first kill. To me, that kind of makes sense. So Cassante actually gets a solo kill on the Orn. Oh, God, this is risky. So Katarina obviously naturally doing quite bad in mid. What is she going to do? Roam. It's the Katarina way of life. Uh, nice fear does stop the enemy progressing. No, it doesn't because it's Katarina. Champion is just silly. And there we go. So Katarina, who has been demolished this game, arguably just straight up beaten badly, her first roam, she gets three kills. And that is why people hate Katarina. <laughs> and people always will hate Katarina. <laughs> That's annoying for them. Um, right, so buffs are spawning soon. Um, ooh, Kha'Zix does take Shaco's stuff. Don't think Kha'Zix... Well, and this, well I was going to say, this is the, the, the bad thing of you're a level ahead of Shaco... The Kha'Zix having his Dirk early, you know, Shaco has got a bit of damage now, but Dirk is really strong in the early game, man. Like, it's really good. Um, hopefully that translates into a kill, which it does with the, the Pantheon. So that was a bit of a mistake by the Kha'Zix in the end there. Uh, and Nivea is actually feeling the pressure of roaming. So again, that is the other thing that I... It's it's a thing that over, hopefully me explaining gets you guys to understand Inivia is one of the worst roaming champions in League of Legends. She's one of the slowest base movement speed champs. She's awful at roaming. When you're against something that only roams or wants to roam like a Katarina, it puts so negative pressure on you as Inivia because she's avoiding lane phase or you beat them in lane phase. And then if a Katarina is like, right, I'm going to roam and I'm going to get a triple kill on my first roam, it makes you as an Inivia go, well, I guess I have to roam now. And it's a negative feeling because Anivia does not want to roam. But you have to. Because if you then don't roam, Katarina is going to end up legendary in five minutes. It sucks. It's why, again, it's why I think, as especially an ex Anivia main who played against Katarina's a lot, there's a reason I dislike Katarina a lot. And it's part of that. Is it just... Ooh, it just forces you to roam when you really don't want to. Uh, and obviously, roaming is a big part of the modern League of Legends game. Um whether you like it or not. But yeah. So is going to go... Oh, is he not? So one thing I should probably put on here, by the way, objective timers, so we actually can get the timers over here. Another gank coming in. Boom, gets the damage, gets the damage, and then obviously end up with the E because it is a execute of sorts. And they do get another kill on the K. So he was considering basing then, but he saw a kill opportunity in mid, so he cancelled his base and he's taken the kill opportunity. You see the Katarina is spamming the Shaco, very unhappy with him. What build are you doing? Is he going Stride Breaker first item? Is that that? That's weird, isn't it? So, see, the enemy team does have Smolder. Uh, nice. Uh, Hilarity, one of the counters you could say to Smolder, will be something like a Pantheon because it's the early game strength. Triforce? Oh. Triforce Shaco. That seems weird to me. Uh, did he miss that or did he try to do a fake out? I can't tell. Um, Anivia's in egg form. She's going to die. If I was Shaco, I might have tried to do one of those. But never mind. Kha'Zix is going to continue. Walk straight into a box. And the fight is on. 
if Shaco can get this kill, it's big. So he does get his flash, which again is not bad for pressure. Which one is it? They have to take a 50-50. Really good Shaco players are very good at pretending. Wow. Really good Shaco players, like I was literally going to mention, uh, are very good faking out which is the real one. So there you go. He actually ends up with a double kill. That was really badly played by both Katarina and Kazix. But the Shaco disguised himself really well. Even, I'll be honest, I didn't even know which was the real one at a point. So if I don't even know which is the real one and I'm watching a replay, yeah, the enemy team who are in the game definitely don't know which is the real one. Um, I would say that is arguably... I don't think Shaco is the most skillful champion nowhere near, but the biggest element of skill that Shaco has, I do think, is clone control. Uh, if you can be amazing with clone control and you can make it so hard to be like, which one's the real one? It's a nightmare for the enemy team. Katarina is dead again. Um, yeah, it's an absolute nightmare. And I think that Shaco just showed that. And Seraphine double kill. So again, that is, by the way, near enough five people top lane. Um, I guess they really wanted to secure the Void Grubs. And how you do that is have numbers in the area. So they didn't actually help Shaco do them. But when there's four people around fighting, the enemy team cannot think about going for them. So, yeah. So, uh, one of the things... I obviously definitely struggle with when it comes to Shaco is maintaining good levels of farm because you're such a an active jungler. I want to gank. I want to gank. I'll do the objective. Gank, gank, gank. Maintaining farm is very important. You get uh, most of the time the majority of your gold in league, even as a jungler, through farm. So make sure you are. Goblin. Oh. Unfortunately, it's been bugged on replays for a while. I Normally you press X and it flips to the gold screen. Well, it just doesn't work anymore. Yeah, Triforce first item. I've never considered that. Would it be Triforce then into Blade of the Ruin King? He's got Hail of Blades. So then Triforce obviously is, you know, after using an ability, your next attack is Enhanced, which is obviously good for Shaco. Your ability, by the way, the Q will count. So you press Q, and then when you go for a backstab, your initial proc from Triforce is being proc from Q. If you combine that with being behind the target of a backstab, that's a lot of damage. But he's quick, isn't he? Boots of Swifties. Like, if that's not right there, an advert for buying Boots of Swiftness, I don't know what is. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Why does the Zillion have Grasp of the Undying? That's weird. A uh, Shiv would also proc it as well. See, if you Shiv and then auto attack, any ability. If you put a box down, um... If you put a box down and then press uh, an auto attack, it will have the, the prop from Triforce if it's available. I'm just saying for your initial usual engage as Shaco, you press Q as your stealth and you go behind the target to backstab. That will work. Ooh, that was a bit of a mistake by Shaco to be that low health. I think even if Kazix wasn't around, Shaco was dead to Katarina though. Little bit of a mistake, but it does happen. Yeah, he might go Tiamat. Ooh, Warhammer. Okay. This is a build, I will say, that I am unfamiliar with for Shaco. Again, Triforce is a good item at the moment, so I, I can see it. Obviously, to me... Okay, he changes his mind. Uh, to me, early game snowballing Shaco, it's weird for just not to go early lethality, because obviously the, the standard build is Profane Hydra into Blade of the Rune King for scaling. Uh, but the Profane early, um, early lethality is just very good for the early game. So as you can see here... Literally every single about to be camp is up on Shaco's jungle. And this is where I've always said, you know, I've recently taken up jungle more this season. Um, we've been doing okay. Obviously, we were Diamond 1 a month or whatever ago. Was going really good. And then we've had this kind of big dip. Hopefully. And, you know, it's not even hopefully. We will get back up in Diamond 1 at least. Um, I remember when I was first playing jungle, you know recently again at the beginning of it there was a lot of comments which were quite critical of oh dude you're, you're clear you're leaving camps up all the time but then when you watch challenger players or some of the best players within their own ranks yeah it's common because you can't always do it like it's that simple you can't always like fully clear everything that's loud like you just can't it, it's not effect like you could even say it's not effective to play like that because there are other things that you can get on with it's you can't have a perfect clear 99% of the time. And that's okay. So, a bit of a mistake coming in. So, grouping, obviously, is powerful. 
uh, for Smolder, etc. So they managed to get a nice play. So they do need to be careful, I'd say, this game still. Again, Kazakh's strength, even though you'd think, oh, the Katarina's done bad, she's got six kills. It's a Katarina. She still can kill things. Like, that's the whole thing with Katarina that I've... Another thing that I've always disliked is you destroy them. You've made them die a lot. If she gets a good R in the middle of a team fight, she can just recover her game in one fight. You know, it sucks, but it's the way of a champion. So again, this is definitely something I'm picking up from this game. I'm definitely picking up to have the confidence to just leave it. You know, you don't feel the need to be there. Make sure, obviously, the box will survive. But look, that's 600 health. That was 667 health just leaves. And it was easy. The box is staying up alive forever. I think that is definitely something that I can do a bit more of. I might do it a little bit, but definitely nowhere near as much as what this Shaco is doing. And that just saves you time. Like, look how quick. So, again, his whole his whole jungle was available. He's just going to clear it in one go pretty quickly. And Pantheon support, I would say, yes, he is strong in the early game, but he's not going to be as strong as an actual jungler uh, who's also building lethality. So he needs to be a little bit careful. He might need to, like, rein in his aggressiveness a bit. Of being kind of by himself at random moments. So Shaco is on the hunt. Unfortunately for Shaco, I doubt Kassanti might have seen him. There's a chance he might have seen him. He definitely has now. Um, so build-wise for Shaco, this will definitely determine what he's buying. Eclipse. Well, that determines it. Jeez, okay. So Eclipse is a very just strong item in the game right now. So, damn. So hitting a champion with two separate attacks or abilities within two seconds deals 8% health. Uh, health bonus physical damage and grants you a shield. Damn. Again, Halo Blades is obviously very good with that because Halo Blades, after using an ability or whatever, you get to uh, auto attack very quickly for three times, I think. Um, cloth armor next. I, like, what? What would that be for? GA? This is a bizarre build. Again, I'm all for learning new builds. And this one, like, when would you do this build over standard? My only guess is this build is less risky to do against something like a Kha'Zix. So if you're fighting a Kha'Zix when you're full lethality, the chance that she literally just pressed R. And that doesn't help the meme of Katarina's just press R, because that's all she literally just did. And look at this Katarina. She's just running for the Shaco. What the heck? Um, Jesus Christ, I'm so sorry about that. There's nothing I can do. It's just very loud. Um, but yeah, that, that would be my guess. Is Oh, bad Seraphine ult is this build might be better against things that you're scared of high damage. That's my only guess, because the Lethality build does good damage, but you, you're very squishy, right? Nice. That, uh, the Zillion ult literally just timed... Nice. The Zillion ult just timed out, and they do. So, hilariously, that fight looked like it was going bad for blue team, but the one thing that they had, which I really liked... Did you see how patient they were? They were losing that fight, arguably. They kept their patience and eventually then went in at the end. So that was actually kind of cool to see. Uh, you can win fights that you are losing at the beginning as long as you remain calm. And that's what they did. So that was awesome. Crit Shaco is a no-go. It's just not needed. Either go kind of lethality or kind of go on hit with Blade of the Ruin King is kind of the idea. Crit, I don't think, is really a thing on the, on the clown. So again, he left that box. So that's the thing. He actually, I don't think... Oh, no, that did die. Wait, why are you bot lane? That is a, that is a big overstay if I've ever seen one. Bonk. There you go. So, yeah, I don't know what the carry Again, the carry does give me partial tilt vibes. I, I'm, I'm sure people may agree to that. It does seem that she might be just tilted. Ooh. Close. Again, I am seeing... One thing I will say... The Shaco is holding his shiv, which I know the shiv is supposed to be used when people are lower health, but it does slow things. Like, it's a 25% slow for three seconds. Sometimes it looks like maybe he should use the shiv and that will help a teammate get something. But yeah. Oh, nice Seraphine ult. Look at that Orn damage. Again, hilariously, people are like, that was Seraphine. No, that was Orn damage straight up. That was a lot. Again, once again, the Pantheon is fighting the Kha'Zix. I don't know why. Shaco is literally just running mid lane with the uh, Rift Herald. He's deciding not to use the second charge, like the uh, controlled charge. But yeah. I'm quite content with this game. If I'm on a Twitch chat, is just saying, you know, I'm sure you don't mind seeing a cat get killed a lot. 
I'm, I will say I'm actually, you know, I'm not sad about it. Put it that way. They have to be careful of overstay here. Katarina will be on her way, no doubt. Hey, look, there's the Katarina. And she's pressed R, baby. So, Shaco might look to try and get a pick if he can. Oh, they're just continuing? Oh, my God. So, Shaco, where are you? Oh, Shaco should have gone north, man. He would have ended up with at least one kill there. He's turned to fight the, the, the Kazakhs. And this is the thing. If I was a Shaco with my typical build, I don't know. Wow, that Kazakh damage. I don't know if I'd have the confidence to fight a Kazakhs, but I think that's what this build is giving him is a Shaco can match a Kazakhs with this build because he's, like, not insanely squishy. So that is Pantheon support dealing with a Smolder. Again, Smolder's very weak in the early game. So again, historically, the Kazakhs has been fighting the Pantheon and winning. Or does he just survive? Shaco didn't ignite him. Genuinely, Shaco did not press ignite. Oh, they might think to do Baron, though. And obviously, the Pantheon is actually being a really big distraction, which is good. And the Baron is being started. Hey, Blue Chew. So, yeah, that I might I might give this build a go. I will say, if I, you know, I'm having a break from playing Solo Queue, I'm going to go play Solo Queue after this. If I play Shaco today, it doesn't mean that I'm going to do this build, but it's put it in my mind. Um, you, this Katarina, you can see, she is a proper raging out. But, yeah. Um, so, Baron's going to go down... Um, late smite, has to be said. Does Shaco clone stop Kazix doing isolate damage? I would imagine it would, yes. Um, yeah. So, Eclipse has been up... Oh, Death's... Dead Man's Plate? So, basically, a lot of what this Shaco... If you actually look at the items that he's doing... So, Shaco obviously gets an empowered attack with pressing Q and going for a backstab. Then, he's getting a prop from Triforce when that happens... Then, if he gets a couple of autos in, he's getting a, a Eclipse with that as well. And Dead Man gets a bonus on your first hit when it's charged. So, in essence, this is kind of, as weird as it sounds, it's a it's a tanky or bruisery build that, in theory, does a lot of damage on your first hit on somebody. If I was like, what item would I want next? And just to put it out there, obviously, I've never seen this build before in Shaco. I'd go Blade the Ruin King next. That's what I would say. I'd, I'd go Blade the Ruin King just to get that absolute DPS that I think you might... God! I think Maya legit heard that, by the way, in my headset because she just moved. She's sleeping at my feet and she just went, what was that? That's how loud it is. God. So yeah, Shaco's damage is pretty decent. Walk in mid lane altogether. And again, Seraphine, I know some people are in the annoy like people are annoyed about that champion again by the way um she is arguably a little bit too oppressive in these kind of moments the big team fights the ultimate that's amazing the big shielding it's a little bit annoying to deal with um because you know if you look at her build she's got two support items she's in the ad carry position or the carry position in bot lane and she's building as a support it's a bit annoying but yeah but there we go that was actually a really interesting game to watch so Triforce into Eclipse into, well, Swifties first if your early game has gone well and Dead Man for survivability. Yeah, I like the idea of the build. I can get why you would do it. But that is going to be it. If you guys did enjoy, do throw a like on it, throw a comment, throw a subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Call down the reckoning to bring back hope and peace. Restore our glory. Regime and a